Hello. Oh, wonderful. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Peace Church this morning um, for this festive Christmas season. Um, it's a blessing to have each and every one of you here um, and online. Um, and yeah, we hope that it is a blessing. And um, we're going to start with an opening prayer. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank you so much um, for allowing us to gather here today um, and to praise your name. Um, I thank you for our community um, and I thank you that um, yeah, we get to um, share um, how marvellous you are. Um, I pray that you um, help us to leave our distractions um, at the door, and I pray that you um, speak to us this morning um, and help us to come together and worship you because you are worthy of all our praise. Um, and I just pray a blessing over the service and a blessing over um, this week and this Christmas season as we um, come together to celebrate the birth of Jesus. All of these things we pray in your name. Amen. Okay, so um, we're going to sing um, two more songs, um, so you're welcome to um, sing along and be blessed. Sing.
Okay, um, so we're going to have our readings for this morning. Um, so the first Bible reading comes from Zephaniah um, 3, verses 14 to 20. Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all of your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear Zion, do not let your hands hang limp. The, L the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppress, 
rescue. <laughs> I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honour in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honour and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. The, um, the second reading today comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our final reading today comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 16. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I can tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share one, the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even the tax collectors came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people who were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The word of the Lord. <laughs> um, so um, we're going to go into a time of sharing, um, and I just want to share a little bit of a, a testimony, um, and it kind of um, goes along the lines of the reading that we had in Philippians, where it says, "Rejoice in the Lord always, and present to Him um, all of our prayers and petitions." Um, so I don't know if you guys find this really frustrating in Toowoomba, but there are no parks. There are no car parks whatsoever. You drive around Toowoomba, there's no parks anymore. It's so frustrating. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I do the classic, God, please provide me with a car park today. And in most cases, I'm like, oh, a car park, and I go in, <laughs> and it's great. Um, but the other day, um, I was driving in Grand Central and I was like, okay, God, please provide me with a car park. And there was nothing. And I was driving around and around and around and oh my goodness. And I was like, okay. And my attitude, I noticed that my attitude, um, I was like, God, like, why aren't you providing me with a car park? Like, I've been driving around for like 10 minutes. And then I felt the Holy Spirit go, I'm still good even if I don't provide you with the car park straight away. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, um, so sometimes we like pray, we pray for things and God does it immediately and it's wonderful and exciting and that's great and um, he should get all the praise. And sometimes we have to be patient and we have to trust him that he has still got a plan for us even when we don't see it. Um, and so that was a big lesson for me because even when we think that God is not working, he's working. And even when our eyes can't see, he's got us and he listens to our prayers. Um, and we need to fix our eyes on him because God's goodness isn't, like it's not defined on whether or not like he answers our prayers straight away. Like he is good no matter what. Um, and we need to fix our eyes and our hearts on him and trust that he has a plan. Um, 
Okay, so that's my little testimony. Does, would anybody else like to share anything? I had a kindness showed to me a couple of weeks, or oh, a fortnight ago. I rushed, um, I rushed into Aldi. I needed a can of ant dust because the ants are building nests everywhere. So I picked up the cylinder of ant nest and a couple of little things. I had three things and I rushed through the checkout and I dropped the, the tin. So some young fellow was there and he picked it up and gave it to me. And I went, paid, and the lady said, do you want a bag? No, I've only got three things. The car's not far away. That's okay. Picked up the three things and dropped the cylinder in thing again. And the fellow there that had picked it up the first time said, give her a bag, I'll pay for it. I said, no, that's all right. Anyway, she gave me the bag and she said, so... I don't know who paid for the bag, but I had a bag and I didn't drop it anymore. There's another thing I have to add to uh, what Gabby has said. Um, now, You'd be listening to that and you think, oh, that's a nice story. She prays for car parks and gets car parks and then come across a time when it don't get your car park and you think, God, what are you doing? God is doing something. And the thing is, the reason he answers our trivial little prayers, like where are my keys and can I please have a car park? And you should always pray those prayers, right? Because it's in those prayers, those little everyday ones, that God can teach you about bigger prayers. So what he's doing in your life now is he's saying, okay, we've got to that stage where you can find your car park. Now I want to lead you into the next stage of praying. So he's, uh, he's saying, look, there's more to learn, so stop doing that now and start doing something new. Um, when, you, when you attached it to that reading, I thought you were going to say, which is the answer, is to is for God to say, God is probably saying to you, look, you should understand now I've got a car park for you wherever you go. How about you start being thankful for the car park before you get there? So the next stage is instead of asking God for the car park, because you know he's got that sorted, drive in and say, thank you, God, for my car park. Let's find it now. God has, he's got one for you, right? That's the... Live in thankfulness rather than wondering whether God is going to provide for you. The next, the next step. Always be looking for the next step of where God is, is taking you in prayer because there's so much for us to learn. So much for us to learn. A hundred years is not enough. So we've got to crank it up a bit. Sorry, Joyce. Away you go. I've just got a little thing to share. Um, a few weeks ago, I had a three-week contract at a primary school and I thought I was going to find it easy and it was actually probably three of the hardest teaching weeks I've ever had. And I was wondering how I was actually going to get through those three weeks. Um, I was exhausted and I just... It was just almost too difficult for me. Anyway, one morning and it was... I had about... Three, hang on, three days to go, I received this text early in the morning from one of the lovely teachers at this school, actually. And she just said, good morning, Joy. And she didn't know that I was teaching. Oh, no, she did know that I had a contract, sorry, but she didn't know that I was finding it hard. Good morning, Joy. The Lord placed you on my heart in prayer this morning. I'm not sure if you have finished your contract yet, but I hope you're going okay. Blessings on your day and praying for you. So then I just said, oh, thank you so much. I have three days to go and every day is a struggle with behaviours. And then she said, strength and perseverance is what he brought to my mind. 
with God by your side and within you, you've got this. And then I just said, well, God was right. That's exactly what I needed. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Um, and I just love the way God worked in that instance. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. Does anybody else have anything to share? All right. Um, now it is the children's address. <laughs> Have we got any kids? Oh, we've got a couple. Very good. One. <laughs> Are they coming? Yeah, they come. Yeah, they come. Very good. How are you all going, okay? Good. Good to see you again. I'm getting a bit old now. I've got to have notes now because I'm starting to lose it. You know what that means? That means I'm going to be just like your dad. Some days he's going to go, he, what does he say? He says, oh, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> That's to think hard. And I have to think hard today too. It was your birthday the other day, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you have a good party? Very good. The readings uh, uh, that we had this morning, the one in particular is about a guy called John. Did you hear the one about John? He was telling people to get ready. Get ready because this John was called John the Baptist and he was saying to people, get ready for Jesus because he's coming, right? And this is our period of Advent, which means we are supposed to be getting ready for Jesus. Jesus. Exactly, yeah. Bingo. And that's what we do in Advent, isn't it? And we think about what happens at Christmas time, don't we? Yeah, so we're getting ready for that. We're thinking about who this Jesus is. and Yeah, so, so uh, what does happen this time? What does this Jesus do? Yeah? Uh, was born. Yeah, and he gets born too, doesn't he? As we think of him getting born now, this, this is what we're celebrating, his birth. All these people in John's time were looking forward to Jesus coming because he was going to be their saviour, right, and their king. And so we look forward to Jesus because he's our saviour and we celebrate that every, every year, don't we? And there's also other things that happen. Lots of people give each other what? Presents. Presents. You look forward to that? It's pretty cool. There's a slide up here, the first one that I've got. Maybe they'll put it up for us. There it is. Can you see the slide? Check it out. You see the handsome bloke in the front? That's me, and the guy in the back's my brother. And that's Christmas for us when I was a kid. And it was really good to get all those presents. Is your Christmas like that? Yeah, sort of, you know, Christmas tree, people there. You're not that old, no, you're right. Yeah, so that was Christmas for me, and I used to look forward to that a lot. Back then you had? Yes. You only had horse and buggies then. <laughs> yes. I'm getting an impression here. Okay. Now, the other thing I know, it's exciting for you guys to get presents, and I saw a cartoon that gave us an idea, maybe we could get a few more. Let's have a look at the next slide. So there's a penguin and a bear. So what's the bear trying to do? Trying to get more presents. Do you see that? Do you reckon that'll work? Oh, I thought this morning we might try. So, who wants to volunteer? <laughs> Let's dress Addison up as a tree. No. All right. Got the star? Tick. Huh? <laughs> 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 you got a big head, Alison. Do you know that? How's that? Okay. Can we have the lights on, please? <laughs> Tell you what.
Yeah, you can sit there with that for a while. See any presents? No. No, there's something wrong with that theory somewhere. Um, okay. Just, let's just leave him sit there for a while anyway and just talk about this. The whole idea of birth, but, um, presents is, is um, what? What's presents based on? Why would you give someone a present? Because it's their yeah. birthday? Yeah? Okay. So you think... It, yeah, so you think if it was Jesus' birthday, should he get the presents? Very reluctantly, you're saying yes. <laughs> well, he did get, a, get some presents, didn't he? Can you remember the three guys on the camels? Because they knew he was the king and saviour, so they were bringing some really flash good gear that was really expensive, and they came along and gave him, what's the, th frankincense? No. What's the other one? Gold, yeah. Saw a cartoon the other day that had diapers. That would have come in handy, wouldn't it? Changing the baby Jesus over. So they gave Jesus gifts, didn't they? But that's about the only ones. So you think all oh, these gifts should go just be to Jesus because of him. But the fact is, God gave us Jesus as a gift himself. So Jesus is actually a gift for us. Now, my um, granddaughter, Lucy, did a play at a school that was called um, The Perfect Gift. And it was about the perfect gift of Jesus for us. Um, and the perfect gift for the people that were looking forward to Jesus coming was their king and their saviour, to save them from their sins, to make their life better, to bring them back with God again, to make all of us better people again and to live the lives that God wants us to live. What sort of life should we live as people of God? Should we be good? Kind? Helpful? Yeah? Yes? Useful? It's always good to be useful. And what else can we say? It can be, um, say somebody needs help or something, we help them, don't we? If somebody um, isn't well, we make sure they're okay, we go and visit them. Yep. Uh, have kindness. Yeah. And we should also be thankful for the things we have. And so, at Christmas time, we show each other how much we love for each other and care for each other. We give each other presents that remind us of the present that God gave us in Jesus. And uh, that's a very special gift, like that little play that Lucy was in. The perfect gift, the best gift ever. Yeah, and so I thought, well, I should do something to make it look like Jesus is a gift. So I made this up, and so because you're the Christmas tree, you can have that present just there. Don't open it. <laughs> it's just to look like something. Okay. So what's, what's on the front of there, um, Alison? What's, what's on the front? A picture of the baby Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. What's that little bit on the front? His love is the greatest gift of all. Beautiful. So that's it. His love is the greatest gift of all. So we'll put that present, not under Addison, because Addison, even though he looks like a terrific Christmas tree, I'm going to ask Addison if he could put it underneath that Christmas tree up the front. Would you do that, please? Yep. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So that's to remind us of the best gift ever, and that was Jesus in our hearts, right? Yeah, where are my bones? Pardon? Are my bones? Yeah, you can, you can keep that, yes, sweet. You can stay right there. Righto, let's pray. Thank you, God, for sending us your son, Jesus, our saviour and our king and our lord, the best gift ever. Thank you very, very much. Amen. And now I believe we are to stick around because there's going to be something on there. I believe there might be a song or something. Are you guys interested in singing some songs? There's not a lot of enthusiasm, but that's okay. Let's have a look and see what we got.
Good. Yeah, I'll just wait till the roadies finish moving the furniture. Ah, the best present ever. Yes, coming up to Christmas, we've got to, we think about those things. You know, you need to know where you're going in life, don't you? You need to know where you're going, otherwise you're probably not going to get there. And you need to be aware of your direction, otherwise you might end up in the wrong place. Um, and that's, that's what uh, the, the coming of Jesus at Christmas was all about, was to turn us around and head us along the right path. Uh, even though there were a whole uh, nation of people who were called God's people, they weren't necessarily on the right track. Jesus was calling them to turn around and to get on the right track. Uh, that, was, uh, that was part of his visit to us. But also, actually, he was kind of making the track for them. He was opening the way for them so that they were able to follow him. Uh, so it's a very important time. When we, when we look at the season of Advent, that's what the season of Advent is, ab- is about, to think about direction and to prepare our hearts properly for Jesus. So what I want to talk about this morning is about heaven and hell, looking at the reality of hell and the threat of hell and the wonder of heaven. I'm not going to go into either of those in great detail, but just to say that they are there. So as we think about heaven and hell, as we think about our direction, uh, may we come to understand our own direction and where we're going. Uh, Can I pray? Heavenly Father, we pray that you would guide us and lead us and that as we think about heaven and hell, that you would speak into our lives, speak into our hearts, that we may get our direction right. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, don't don't just want to talk about your own direction, uh, you know, whether you're headed for heaven or headed for hell. I want to talk about what we're doing in that whole scheme of things, Um, what we're doing in the whole direction type uh, approach. Um, we, need to, we need to be prepared. We need to concern ourselves whether our direction is right. There was a time when I had a particular challenge to my direction and this is related to my call to ministry. So uh, when I was called into ministry it was via a vision so I don't know if, if anybody else has had this experience, but this was my experience. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a vision. To me, it was a, it was a vivid dream. Uh, went to sleep one night, woke up in the morning uh, with a new attitude. Uh, I had a severe attitude adjustment during the night. During, the, during that night, I had this dream, and I woke up after the dream knowing that I had been speaking with God. Now, I don't know, it was like a lot of these things are in words. In visions, you know, you don't get a, you know, you don't get the title page like in a movie, you know, where, where, um, you know, this is a vision about your life and then you get to see it and at the end of it they roll the credits saying, you know, starring God, a few other angels, you know, the Holy Spirit. You don't get all of that but somehow it's given to you like in your heart you sort of, get that awareness. So anyway, woke up in the morning with the awareness that I'd been speaking with God. So that kind of wakes you up a fair bit. But I want to tell you about the vision, what happened. (coughs) As I was, uh, as I dreamt that night, uh, we lived on, I lived on a farm in, um, uh, in the Mallee in South Australia. Now I don't, you know, you've just had a drought here in southern Queensland. Um, Now, wherever you are online and things like that, I just want to let you know that in southern Queensland, uh, you don't know what dry is, right? Uh, We, um, you know, average rainfall of our farm was reportedly 12 inches a year, right? 
I can never remember actually getting that amount of rain. That we always got less. Uh, in droughts, we could get three inches or less. My nephew, uh, he was three years old, and he he was out at my uh, parents' farm. I don't know why we were there, but anyway, it just started to rain. By rain, I mean the the latest dust storm was sort of interrupted by a few drops of water, and so you get a bit of mud on your head. Probably not quite that bad, but I did get rained mud on at one stage. But anyway, he came running in to my dad and said, Papa, Papa, the sky is dripping. Right, so pretty dry, desolate place. So anyway, in this dream, I was standing by the side of the road near our, our farm and stopping people walking past. Now, I just want to show you a couple of slides. We go to the first slide and we see um, our, uh, uh, the, the, a, a bird's eye view of the land between Loxton and Suns Sunset Country. Now, on the left-hand side there, you'll see a green section. Well, that's the irrigated surrounds of the township of Loxton in South Australia. Um, that's irrigated from the Murray. They grow oranges and, uh, yeah, all sorts of fruit. Um, and so from there, that's 25 kilometres, rough, uh, no, probably 30 kilometres from the township of Loxton to the Victorian border, which you'll see over the right-hand side. See, there's a line and then there's a bit of a darker section over the other side. So on the left-hand side is the more uh, agricultural farmed land and over the right-hand side is not farmed anymore. Uh, well, you can't really farm it. It doesn't work. Right? It's land that doesn't work. Uh, it's just salt flat country. And when I was a kid, it was a sheep station called Sunset. That was the name of the station, Sunset Station. Now it's a national park because if one sheep walks on it, it takes 20 years for the land to recover. Right, so um, it's a very dry, marginal land. Probably the other side of the margin. Anyway, that's the area that we're talking about. If we go to the next slide, which is partway, probably three quarters to the right, that was our home. Uh, our, our farm's name was Sandy Blow, right? If you go that way, um, down another five or six kilometres, you come to what's called the Goiter's Line, right? The other side of Goiter's Line was where the uh, good agricultural country was. Our side of the line was where our farm was. So we, <laughs> we were the wrong side of Goiter's Line. Anyway, that was where we were. That's a fairly good rendition of what it's like. It's green there once every 10 years. Um, anyway, I was standing out the front there along that road. I couldn't find a, um, a ground level picture for you. It wouldn't go street view, but you get the idea. I was there. And I could see all of these people walking towards me from the township of Loxton out to Sunset Country because that was the place to be. It was so much better out there than the town. They, they'd heard that this was the place to be. They, they wanted to go there. There was a desire to see something better, but I knew what was there and there was nothing better there. And so I was standing there and trying to stop people and begging them not to go past and not to keep going, to go back to the town. And every now and then someone would stop and listen to me and so they'd say, oh, okay, yeah, I hear what you're saying and they'd turn around and they'd go back to the town. A lot of people just kept walking straight past. Some I didn't have the opportunity to even talk to, but some would say, no, you don't know what you're talking about. We know that there's good things out there. And so they kept going. Some, however, stopped and listened and said, OK, I hear what you're saying. Yep, it's no good out there. We'll stop and help. And so they stopped and these people in my dream stayed there and helped me. And there was uh, probably up to a dozen of those that stopped and helped and started to turn people around. 
And then the, the flow of people stopped. And all we could see was people walking that way back to the town and you could turn around and you could see the people walking that way to the border. And then as the dream came to a close, I was lifted up on a, like a concrete overpass, you know, a pedestrian overpass over a, over a highway or something. I was lifted up on something like that. There was rails there so we wouldn't fall off. Very work, health, safety dream. And uh, these other people were still there with me at the end and we were lifted up and we could see back and the people had got back to the town. Most of the people had got back and some were still heading back but they had, you know, it was all good there. They had, you know, food and water and refreshments and everything and they, they could go back there. And then we turned around and we could see out to sunset country and these people going in there and the big gates because there's the dog proof fence on the Victorian border and these quite high, six, seven foot high gates uh, or with this mesh over them, these big steel gates. And as they walk through, as the last person walked through, these big gates closed, never to open again. And you could see these people walking around. If we go to the next slide, you'll see what that country is like. This is a bit of a closer look. You can see on the left-hand side there, there's some salt flats and a bit of cultivated ground. And they can grow crops there. But on the right-hand side, just inside the Victorian border, it's mostly salt flats. And you can see the ground is kind of swirly because it's all just salt flat area and nothing really goes there. Even the, uh, even the ground is sort of, sort of milling about with no place to go. Well, that's where those people were and they were just milling about. They were going around in this big circle uh, looking for what they had come there to find but there was nothing there yet they couldn't return again because the gates were closed. And so there was this kind of despair in them. It was almost tangible, this despair as people milled about in this place full of regret and nothing. Milling about on the salt flats, regretting their decision. I mean, what a, what a terrible picture of hell. Apart from all the punishment and everything that, you know, lake of fire and brimstone that the scriptures talk about, imagine the regret that you could have done something about this. Yet you're there now forever. I mean, you wouldn't want to be in, salt, in, uh, in sunset country forever, let alone hell. So, terrible place. That was, that was my vision. Incidentally, um, we can come back to me now, if you like, and get away from that, dis that uh, um, depressing uh, aerial view of that land. As, um, as my life has gone on, this, this vision I had 42 years ago, as my life has gone on, I've met people from my dream uh, that I hadn't met before. There was one guy there with me uh, who I was friends with at the time, um, but the rest of them I didn't know. And it was interesting because I went to a, uh, a youth conference soon after that, the Youth Assembly at Adelaide. Uh, they don't have youth assemblies anymore. This was the last one. The last one was in Adelaide. I think it was early 1980, 82, I think. Um, and I met a couple of people there. It was funny because I went up to them like I knew them. Oh, hi. I, oh, that's right. You haven't met me. I've met you, but you haven't met me. But um, anyway, there was this one girl. She thought I was chatting her up for a start, but I, I wasn't. It was that I'd met her before. Um, and there's been times through my life where I've come across these people. Uh, my memory's fading now of the faces, and so I don't know if I'm meeting them or not. But um, it just occurs to me that there are people who will stop and help. Uh, there are people who will also join in with the ministry. You know, the more the better, because the more people who join in, uh, that amplifies the efforts of of God's work um, and multiplies it to a degree and so you can impact more people. But it's just 
a clear picture so so you can see that throughout my ministry it's motivated partly yes by the call of god and by by the gospel but also with this vision of people milling about in eternal regret i don't want to see people go through that i don't want to i want to stop as many people as i can from facing that eternal regret that crushing experience of hopelessness and on the other hand though we've got this wonderful vision of heaven which the bible gives us that we can point people towards and so that motivates me you know when there's you know, there's hard times and things look hopeless i know things are going to be hopeless from time to time because i've seen that and and so it it keeps me going and it invigorates me because i know that god has a plan i know that god has a mission i know that god is is at work and doing things and so i can impact lives where are you on that dirt track you know there's all sorts of areas where where people are along that journey we're all all on a journey and you know some of us from time to time find ourselves just following the crowd or or following you know some suggestion or or just walking along wondering where this path will lead us maybe from time to time you come across someone who raises questions about where you're going about your direction and of course all of you sitting here have had that all of you sitting here have been interrupted in your life have come across somebody who stopped you in your walk certainly your, your baptism that's happened there's been a there's been an interruption a stop um, maybe there, and then later on there's been other times where somebody has has stood in your way and uh, and redirected you it may have, may have been self-inflicted interruption you know like oh i, I want to go to church that's a self-inflicted interruption i want to read my bible that's a self-inflicted inter interruption to your normal human behavior your normal human life and so you allow god to speak into your life and uh and you receive a turnaround you receive a, a redirection in your journey maybe there's a call on your life to join in to not only turn around and go back but to stand and help help the cause maybe to to get involved in somebody else's life to try and turn them around to try and uh, bring some kind of influence into the community to uh, to bring a turnaround to to prevent other people from experience experiencing that crushing regret where, where are you on the journey um maybe you're an encourager maybe you're a, a a supporter you know supporting those who are doing the encouraging maybe you're a you're a supporter of those who are doing the interrupting um maybe you're an apprentice interrupter uh, maybe you're a sign holder you know turn around go the other way you know whatever you know picture you want to use we all have a calling to be involved in god's mission in this world not all of us will receive uh, a slap in the face kind of you know i want you to get involved in that but all of us have had the call by virtue of the of our own call to faith that uh, to be involved in assisting where we can to transform the lives of people who are otherwise heading for disaster and so we can all play a part in bringing transformation to the community where are you along, along that path do you have a sense of call do you have a sense of encouragement or do you just feel called back to the town instead of out there listen to where god is calling you 
and, and answer the call and follow where he's leading. May God bless you as you discover your call and as you grow in that. May you grow more and more into what God is leading you into, into your path. Um, and may you listen less to the distractions that take you away from that. May God's peace be with you. Amen. I want to, if you, if during this time you have a, a sense that uh, that God is calling you to some kind of ministry, some kind of support, some kind of uh, of standing in the path and helping, then I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you and bless you. I'm going to be, just be over there to pray for people, uh, or if you. Or if you know someone who is heading for serious regret, then bring that person on your heart and we'll pray for them. Um, or you may have other things you want to pray for, but I just want to focus on those two things right now. A personal sense of call or somebody who's just heading down the wrong path. If you know someone like that, then we want to pray for them. So I'll hand back to Gabby now. You want, want me to pray for you now? Yes, okay. Gabby's doing this. So I think that means pray the Lord's Prayer. Is that right? Okay, all right. Yeah, that was sign language for that. But first I want to I just pray generally for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, uh, that you have provided for us uh, a path, um, a path which leads to paradise, a path which does lead to heaven. Uh, Lord, help us because of the so many counterfeits that are around leading off in all wrong directions. We pray that you would assist us to, uh, to see where directions are wrong, but also to help others too to see where those directions are wrong. Uh, Lord, we want to listen to your guidance. We want to listen to your direction so that we may see the right path. Uh, and Lord, we want to heed your call to help. We want to heed your call that we may uh, help others to avoid that terrible uh, crushing regret. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Rob. Um, now we're going to um, sing our next song. Um, Pastor Rob will um, be available for prayer up the front. Um, and this is a time of um, reflection um, and presenting um, our request to God.
Um, Sorry, getting carried away praying there. But what a thing to do in church. <laughs> let's, um, let's bless you. Let's send you out with a blessing so that we can uh, uh, be a blessing to the community. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord watch over you and give you peace. Amen. And we'll sing our last song. The blessing, oh, the blessing. What a beautiful name. <laughs> Thank you.
Good morning, everybody. Just a few quick announcements this morning. And the, f the first announcement is, of course, we're in Christmas season. We're in Advent, and we've been advertising our various events each week. But uh, today, I mostly want to announce and remind people of what is happening later today. So, Ashley, on the, I think the next slide. Tonight, of course, is the Mount Sylvia Christmas Carols, and there'll be a bit of a practice uh, or a discussion after church here for the band. The, our band will be playing, but for everyone else, grab a chair, get your, port, your portable chair, bring, come up. There's a bring and share a sort of dinner at 6 p.m., and then sit out under the stars and enjoy singing Christmas carols with the cows lowing. I've never actually heard them low, but... Uh, um, but Apparently they do at Christmas, so come along and, and, and enjoy that. It's a wonderful time of celebration. So that's this evening. And then, of course, we've only got, next week we'll be caroling the cottages. But this week we, we will be up at Mount Sylvia, 6 o'clock, for basically when it's dark enough for us to start with the projector on the screen, we'll get into that. Now, of course, being Christmas as well, um, I want to, I'm sure if people are into your Christmas uh, present assemblage and all of that. Uh, Jill, I would like to remind people that uh, the, the Time Out devotion books that we get in are now available in the church bookshop. These are booklets that have a daily devotion for each day of the year. So if there's somebody from your friends or family that you'd like to bless with one of these devotional booklets, they're available in the church bookshop. The cost is $25 and it'd be a fantastic to buy for somebody. Uh, now, People, you will know that this week uh, the, in Queensland, things start to change under COVID. Uh, and so just expect over the coming months that things will continue to potentially change. Uh, as the, the church district has uh, given us some risk assessments for us to follow through, and as a church, church council will be looking at those things over the coming weeks and months to understand how we will respond to various things. It, at the moment, we would imagine that you will not see too many things change, but I'm just letting people know that there's a whole stack of new rules out, and uh, I'd expect things to change, and they even impact on things such as hall hire, and who's hiring the hall, and for what, as to how many people could be in the hall at any time. So we'll be dealing with all of those sorts of bits and pieces. But uh, all I can say to people is to recommend what both the District and the Lutheran Church of Australia has been saying all along is that they recommend to people to, as part of your, your Christian response, to get yourself vaccinated, and that it is the best thing you can do to help support those around you. Uh, the church, if you want, there's a, on the church, uh, the LCA website, they have a statement about their, their position on vaccination and so on. I encourage people to look at that because that, it's, it's, it's where we're at at the moment. But that's all I can say at the moment, but church council will be looking at this over the coming weeks. Actually, there's one more thing. I do want to remind people, we're at the end of two years of this and we're going into our next phase. Can I ask people, as Rob was getting away with, carried away with prayer, can, during the week, can you all get carried away in prayer again and pray for your leaders? And I want you to pray especially for rest, strength and renewal for the people who have then got to try and lead us through the next phase. Can you please get carried away in prayer for people, cover people with, for that over the coming weeks and months? I think I've got... Oh, and I'm going to finish with one more story. Just a story. Through the week, our Anua committee went out to Anua to look at the materials recycling facility. This is what we do as a committee. We make sure we are aware of what's going on around the place. And while we were out there on Friday, I was going up to the lunchroom. I was going to walk up the stairs and I noticed a man coming the other way and he needed to hold the handrail. So I stepped back to get out of his way. He walked down the handrail, saw me and he said, you're from the Lutheran Church. I go, yes, I am. He said, I'm a follower of Jesus. So I, I introduced myself and I had a chat to him and he let me know, he said, that, you know, he told me his name and he mentioned where he goes to church and he'd met, he shared with me how he had managed to put certain other problems in his life behind him and he was so pleased that our church was providing a place that he could work. And that our ministry there was valuable to him and that he was so thankful for the work that we knew of. 
So continue to think about all of those groups and our school, knowing that the church is doing good things every single day. So there's a happy thing to take home with you. That's, that was the highlight of the week for me. God bless you, each and every one, as you go forward this week to love and to serve the Lord.